Thanks very much from all of us to coming along and hear us. I always turn up these things thinking, oh God, what if the room's empty? So to see a room full is, is great. And I love speaking to entrepreneurs. You know, I, I guess I would put myself in that category. And I remember so clearly the moment when I first decided to become an entrepreneur, as I'm sure everyone here does themselves. I was a 16-year-old kid working in a dog biscuit factory in, in Huddersfield, where I sort of grew up. And it was during the summer holidays, and my job was to pick up the dog biscuits that fell off the conveyor belt <laughs> onto the floor, and it paid two pounds an hour. And I remember being on my hands and knees picking up these dog biscuits, thinking, this is really quite a rubbish, <laughs> rub rubbish job. But there's something about me, I'm quite geeky, and I wanted to do a, you know, I wanted to do a good job. And, I figured out, oh, well, if I got a broom, I could do this so much more effectively. So I went up to the foreman and said, you know, in a very sort of polite 16-year-old voice, you know, excuse me, do you, do you have a broom I could borrow? And I promise you, he looked me dead in the eyes and just said, son, you are the broom. <laughs> That's literally the absolute split second when I decided I wanted to become an entrepreneur. So I walked out the dog biscuit factory, the dog biscuit factory and then went home and just thought, well, you know, what is, how, can I, what, how can I solve this problem? How can I earn some money during the summer holidays? And came up with the idea of something with a little gardening business. And so two men went to mow, which was my first business, was born. Um, and it just gave me a sense of, you know, we can change things. We can spot an opportunity or, a, you know, a bad job that we're in. And, and we've all got the, the ability and the capability to sort of to walk out of the dog biscuit factory. It's, a, it's been, it, And I have to say, ever since then, it's just been... It's been, a, it's been a great experience setting up businesses. Um, Innocent, of course, is definitely by far and away the, uh, the, the best and the most successful. It was set up by myself and my two closest friends, and we'd met at college and met over a common love of nightlife, essentially, and there wasn't much of it going on in Cambridge. So we, again, we, we tried to solve it. So Adam and I started DJing and organizing club nights, and John it was the third of us. Um, was the only geek that had a computer. And this is, you know, back in the very early 90s. That was a big deal. So we used him to design the flyers and posters and got a sense of how great it would be to work together. And always said, from that point on, we'd love to set up a business. Um, of course, didn't do that. Then moved down to London. Did different jobs, but kept having this same conversation with ourselves about how much we'd love to set up a business. And found ourselves four years later on a snowboarding weekend. Yet again, having that same cyclical conversation about we'd love to set up a company together. And we said to ourselves, look, we'd, e we'd either got to stop talking about this or get on with it, otherwise we're going to drive ourselves completely nuts. And so we set ourselves the limit of that weekend where we had to come up with an idea that something that we could, you know, that we were passionate about and that we could come back and, and go for it. Otherwise, that would be it. We'd never have that conversation again. And I think putting that deadline, that weekend, made us take it really seriously. So we spent that whole weekend coming up with ideas, and we said we wanted to make life a little bit better and a little bit easier, this idea that you want to have a contribution to society. So we started there, what would make life easier and better? And we soon got to the, uh, the, the solution. What was going to make life easier and better for people was this invention that we came up with, which was the amazing electric bath, which <laughs> I, I, I can genuinely say this with a very high degree of certainty that it was the absolute worst business idea that anyone's ever thought of. It was a, it was a bath that would fill itself to a pre-designated level and a pre-designated temperature all at the touch of a button. And I was into it because I was the marketing guy, so we're going to call it the amazing electric bath. And Adam, the sales guy, could see it being sold to hotel chains across the world. And John, who was the engineer, really was excited because he got to use his engineering skills. And we left him for half a day drawing out the plans for how this would work. And we met him in the bar in the evening, looked at these plans, and realized that they literally all had water and electricity in close proximity. And <laughs> we realized we're not going to make life easier and better for people. We're just going to make life a lot shorter for people, which is a very limited consumer appeal. And we went back to sort of basics and said, OK. As actually, a boss of, at the time, a, a woman called Kathy Reed, said, if you're going to set up a business, make sure you know your target audience. Very simplistic, very simple thing to say, but it was really powerful to us back then because we realized we weren't in the market for you know, buying baths, and we didn't know anyone that was. So we said, who's the audience that we know? And we realized it's ourselves. It's ourselves and our friends. And so then we started thinking, OK, so 
what's a need that we've got, what's an itch that we've got that we need scratching, what can we do to solve a problem for someone? And I fundamentally believe this, the, the best business ideas, they start from that point. They start from solving a genuine need for a consumer. They've either got a problem that needs fixing or there's a gap that they can't fill. There's something that is just stopping the life being a little bit more fun or a little bit more easy. And for us, it was the fact that it's really difficult to be healthy. You know, we were 20, three 26-year-old guys, and so we're eating too much pizza and drinking too much beer and aware that's not a great thing to do, but there's something about modern life that conspires, about, conspires against being healthy. So we said, well, that's what Innocent will be. It will be, provide that solution. It will get natural, fresh, healthy smoothies and other healthy food and drink, make it universally available so people can grab it on the way into work and have that little healthy habit. And so our idea was simple. It was something we understood. It came from um, an insight of what we ourselves needed. What we ourselves, if that product had been on the shelf that day, we know we would have got our own money out of our own wallet and bought it. And I do think that's a good exercise for any of the business ideas you're thinking about. You know, Would you literally buy it tomorrow if you saw it? Would you give your hard-earned cash towards it? Is it genuinely solving a need that people have? We, of course, had never set up a smoothie business before. Outside of my gardening business, we hadn't really set up any proper businesses before. But it's great hearing your story. We, again, we were started from the kitchen sink too. That's, that's the great thing about food and drink. It's, very, um, it's a great industry into which to have your first business because you can start from the kitchen, you can make the products yourself, and then you can get out there and start selling them. So that's what we did. And our first smoothies we sold from a, a stall at a music festival. That was the, sort of the extent of our ambitions at that stage. Um, we bought 500 pounds worth of fruit and turned it to our favorite recipe, and then sold it from a stall that had a sign above it saying, should we give up our jobs to make these smoothies? And I had a bin that said yes on it, and a bin that said no on it. I got people to buy them for the right amount of money, and then drink them, and then vote with the empty bottles. And we made a commitment to each other. If the yes bin was full, we'd go in the next day and resign and set up the business full time. And so we had this sort of, sort of sweaty moment where we sort of realized the yes bin is full. And there was a few bottles in the no bin, which our parents then guiltily admitting to having put there because they were <laughs> worried about us giving up our decent jobs at the time. But we had this very strange Sunday evening, actually, back at our house in Barons Court, where we all shared, saying, well, we've said we were going to do it. But we, I could tell we were about to start bottling it again. We weren't going to go in the next day and resign. So we decided we would toss a coin. And if it came up tails, then we would go for it. And it came up tails three times in a row. And, and actually, it was that point where we committed to each other that we definitely would go in the next day and resign. <laughs> and then even that day was sort of fraught with sort of stresses and uncertainties, because I, I literally I remember stood outside my boss's office, Jory and Murray, it's 10.30 on Monday morning, I'm about to go and resign from my job, and I'm thinking, I just don't know if Adam and John are going to do the same thing. <laughs> so I left and went back and rung them, because we were all supposed to do it. It's 10.30 simultaneously. And I went back and I rung them, and I said, have you done it? And they went, no, but why haven't you done it? <laughs> so we all pumped each other up to do it again, and we went back in, and we did resign, and we went back to saying the business full time. And I have to say, it was unbelievably difficult, so much harder than we thought, um, but not for one second has it not been worth it. It's been the most exhilarating, mind-expanding, friendship-bonding, wealth-creating experience. I just feel so lucky because it's just been such a brilliant 12 years. And we've had many different types of experiences. We've had it, the experience of a business that has grown, doubled in size, year after year after year. So it felt like we could do no wrong. And then literally to see it all absolutely turn from 2007 to 2008, where in 2008, our sales plummeted. We literally had lost more money in that one year than we have in the entire business's collective history. So it, it decimated the business. We lost loads of sales. We had to make loads of people redundant. Um, we went from being fated in the press. We literally, within a month, we had been awarded on national television the award for uh, the best British business people, presented by Gordon Brown. A month later, we had announced that we were selling our smoothies in McDonald's, and people went nuts in the press about it. And the, the quote that I remember the most vividly is someone wrote, it's like finding out your uncle is a paedophile. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, we've gone from like the greatest British businessman to paedophile in a month. I mean, what's happening?